Hey Game Makers! A feature present in almost all of the Guy's Melody series is its use of Mode 7 on the overworld and for various important cutscenes. In Echoed Memories, something I call Mode 7 Theater, is used for some of my favorite parts of the game, and I thought it'd be fun to go over how I did them, as well as the world map and some other Mode 7 stuff. I used a Mode 7 plugin to get a pseudo 3D effect for bees. But there is also a full RMMV slash MZ 3D plugin I'll briefly talk about at the end of the video. The plugin I used is Blizzard's Ultra Mode 7 plugin. Quick note, it requires permission to use commercially. Which I have for both use in my game and use in videos. Yay, go me! Thanks. Let's take a short look at the plugin itself before I begin here. The plugin has codes in the help box? Help box! That you can use to modify the camera distance, field of view, pitch, yaw, parallax distance, etc. Quick note. For use in my game, we had to make a few minor alterations, including setting the character's direction via a tag, and something I don't quite remember about the parallax is not scrolling. I don't know, it was like three years ago. It should be noted that the version of the plugin I used is most likely quite outdated at this point. So the one currently available probably has more options and bug fixes now. Digressing aside, the parameters include the defaults for the map fade off into the distance thing, scaling, scrolling, pixel editing, whether the player's directions are affected by the camera angle, loop map things, and the defaults for these guys. I'd say to start, just leave these be, and only start messing with them if you find you absolutely need to. Mode 7 Theater! First off, Let's talk about that Mode 7 Theater thing I mentioned earlier, cause let's be honest here, that is by far the coolest part. I used a lot of other plugins to help achieve the theater effect. Things like changing the window skin, things with fog, picture lighting, auto advancing text, particles, but for the most part we're just going to be covering the Mode 7 aspect. And the basic gist is using the above mentioned codes to control the camera. To save myself trouble, I have the player transparent and use them as the main camera. So I essentially jumped the player around the scene and applied the camera effects as I went. As Echoed Memories is a remake of the RMXP version, Guy's Melody Another Epilogue, it had had its own version of the play. For RMXP, I used H Mode 7, which was just the coolest script that lagged like balls. But thanks to that, I was pretty much able to one for one the camera effects with some minor conversions, making changes where necessary. Okay, so like the fun stuff. As the Ultra Mode 7 plugin allows events to be vertical on the 3D plane, any props I needed were events. So grass, fences, tables, anything I needed to appear upright. Everything else would be flat flooring, like the bed here. I tried to use flat stairs to kind of give an illusion of stage depth here. In the RMXP version, I was able to utilize height maps for effects like that. But Ultra Mode 7 doesn't have them. Thankfully, Ultra Mode 7 also doesn't lie like balls, so... Fun fact, the way I darkened the screen here, actually just one big black event. So the part I found most interesting to do were the backgrounds. I used the same concept I'd come up with for another epilogue, which is really big vertical events. Except in this game, I went a little further with it. I actually have multiple layers of background set up to try and give an illusion of depth. I found this effect worked really awesomely to try and present the idea of a stage prop background. Let's take a look. For the first layer here, I have black windows. This means you'll be able to see through them. What I did was have a row of events with a sequence of sprites. This is done so if the camera angle... angles... too much, it doesn't look totally terrible. And it still reads as a wall, even if it's a little odd looking. In the RMXP version, I'm pretty sure I was able to just use one big event sprite and turn it to match the camera angle, but I couldn't do this here. You might be able to now, but at the time, it was a no-go. Behind the foreground layer, I had an in-between layers, <laughs> mostly used for grass, particle effects, other trees, etc. Behind these was a solid background image, set up the same way as the foreground sprites. If I needed to scene switch the background, I just have them on a variable. For each area scene, I copied the map so all of my little audience members would stay put and altered it for the new scenario. Lastly, this was something really cool I liked. I have the characters taking a bow at the end of the play, 
The background is behind them. So, I have these curtains here. I moved them all to the same two tiles, one on the left, one right, and then progressively moved each one of them towards the center, increasing the number of steps on each one, thus giving the illusion of the curtains closing. Gotta say, I was low-key kind of proud of this one. I actually put a cute little easter egg into the audience, and was happily honored when someone found it and posted the picture over on Steam. Now, there's a second Mode 7 theater later in the game, and while it's otherwise the same setup, I do have characters in the audience talking at points. For these, I just use Yet Message Core and its extensions to place the player character's text boxes over top of them. Because of 3D offset reasons, I ended up having to put these mostly over random events in the audience to line them up properly. I also have them commenting on things while the dialogue is up, so I used Gal's timed pop-ups so that it didn't interfere with the flow. I think that's all about Mode 7 Theater. Let's take a quick look at the world maps then. Something I absolutely didn't want to do is overload the world map with so many events that it legs like balls. Because, yeah, been there. Don't, don't want to go there again. So I had to be really careful with how many scenery events I was using. For the main terrain of the overworld, it's just slightly edited RM tiles. I use shrunken down map graphics for the area locations and have their names hovering over them as events. I used a small variety of mountains to add in some depth to the overworld. I really, really loved RMXP's H Mode 7's height maps for Gaia's Melody and other epilogue. Gosh, that was a mouthful. I loved the effect that game had, so I tried to replicate it as best I could. The underwater map was much the same, using larger mountain sprites and some underwater. Um, uh. The word that these are to add to the underwater atmosphere. I also added in some bubble particles that, if followed, direct you to the two locations you can go underwater. And some secret light sources where you can emerge from. Cutscenes! The M7 cutscenes are set up in the exact same kind of way. There's this magic school duel that I attempted to set up the map tiles to add some depth. And the audience members themselves are just events from a very large sprite sheet made at varying heights to promote depth. The rest are set up much the same with little difference. But there is one other of interest. There's a scene within a decaying castle that I thought turned out pretty cool. We got light beams scattered throughout, again, just events, and some destroyed looking wall bits because, like, could you imagine if there was just a wall here, like... Then this door! This door was a pain in the butt! I had to figure out a way to make the door look like a door, no matter the angle you looked at it. And I eventually settled on doing it the same way I was doing the walls. There are particles all around to show the magicness dissipating from the castle. And these shadows. These shadows are interesting because at some point this door here opens. So I made a quick tile set switch to a version where these tiles specifically aren't shaded. There are a few other areas done like this, but that's basically the gist of all of them. Since back in the day, I always had this weird affinity towards Mode 7. At the time I made Gaia's Melody echoed melodies, I was quite sad there wasn't a functional one available by the time I needed it. It turned out to be the one GM game that doesn't have Mode 7 in it. Though I did admittedly try. It's always been really exciting working within the limits of something and figuring out how to make it work for you. There is another plugin I want to briefly talk about, in case you're interested in actual 3D maps in your games. There's a plugin called MV3D and MZ3D, and while I've only played around with it briefly, the way it lets you simply use the MV resources as 3D models is very interesting to me. It lets you do height, camera, models, and lots of other neat things. So if you're interested in full-on 3D in these engines, it's definitely something neat worth looking into. I've seen some really awesome things come from it. Anyway, thanks for watching another This Is What I Did in RPG Maker video. If you're interested in these games, they're available on Steam, my website, and lots of devlog stuff on my YouTube channel and at Echo607 on Twitter. Like that time I started posting about our favorite bugs. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you later, gamers!